Okay, hi, so welcome to this video on homeostasis. In this video, we're just going to cover what homeostasis is and the core basics behind it, but we're not really going to go into specific examples. So first of all, what is homeostasis? Well, you should know that homeostasis in simple terms means maintaining or the maintenance of a stable internal environment. Right now, what does that mean? Because that's a lot of long words. If you think about something like a human being like me and you, Basically, our, our body temperature doesn't change too much. We want to keep it around about 37 degrees. It will fluctuate slightly from that, but not too much, right? If our body temperature goes up to 50 degrees, we're definitely dead. If it goes down to 30 degrees, we're also dead, right? So it needs to be maintained within a certain range. There are other conditions which also need to be maintained, right? And they need to be stable. That is basically what homeostasis is. It's the process of controlling those conditions, okay? So... What are those conditions? So the conditions we're talking about, we've just said are core temperature, right, core temperature. Note, by the way, that these conditions do change between organisms. And what I'm listing here isn't all of the conditions that our body controls, but it's the ones that you need to be aware of. Right, so core temperature is absolutely true. Blood glucose. Okay, so your blood sugar levels, more specifically your blood glucose levels. All right. All right, also our water content, right, water content. We don't want to be too hydrated and we don't want to be too dehydrated. Okay, also our blood pressure, blood pressure, a very high and a very low blood pressure are both dangerous. And so we want to control our blood pressure within a certain, uh, certain range. Okay, now those are just a few. There are more, but I'm not going to dwell on those too much. Importantly, though, the way that our bodies have actually evolved is that we have control systems, right? We have control systems which allow us to maintain a stable environments in terms of all of these variables, right? Now, that means that despite external changes, for example, the outdoor temperature could be 50 degrees if you're somewhere really hot like Phoenix in Arizona, or it could be something like minus 20 if you go somewhere really cold in the winter, right? If you go to the Arctic, it's going to drop even lower than that. However, a human being's body temperature should still be maintained at 37 degrees, okay? So, despite the external conditions, our body has evolved control systems to maintain those internal um, conditions. All right, so now importantly, I mentioned that these are automatic, right? You don't have to think in order to maintain your internal body temperature or your blood glucose level, right? These control systems happen automatically, right? So we have these control systems, which generally operate via something called a negative feedback mechanism, okay? So we have a negative feedback mechanism. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, basically negative feedback means when something happens or when something is or when something changes, for example, a condition changes, the feedback mechanism causes a reverse of that change. For example, if our body temperature increased, then a negative feedback mechanism would work to decrease it. Okay, negative because it's the opposite to what's happened. Whereas if our core body temperature decreased, then the negative feedback mechanism would work to increase it. Okay, so it's counteracting a change, right, in order to maintain the status quo, as it were. And now there are three parts to this kind of mechanism, right? There are three things that have to happen for this mechanism to, uh, to be carried out. The first thing is we need a way of detecting that there's been a change. Right? If your body temperature was 37 degrees constantly, well, then you're not going to detect that it's gone up or it's gone down. But if it goes up, we need to be able to detect the fact that it's gone up. Right, So you detect the change. Next, that information needs to be processed. Okay, So something needs to process the fact that you've detected the temperature's gone up or gone down. Right. Then, lastly, we have a response. And the response is how you actually reverse that change. Right, so you have your three steps, detection, processing, and response. Now, in general, there are three things which, um, 
which basically have these jobs, right? So what actually detects these changes? Well, broadly, they are called receptors. Okay, so receptors are going to detect changes in something, right? The receptors then contact what we call the coordination center. Okay, and these things obviously vary depending on what we're talking about. But you have a coordination center for different things. The brain is an example of a coordination center, right? And then a response. Okay, now your response is carried out by something known as an effector. Okay, so there are different kinds of effectors which are going to do different things, but their role is to carry out a response. Now, we're going to go into more specific examples in later videos, right? We're going to have a look at specific examples of receptors, the coordination centers, and the effectors, and how they all link together. But I just want you to understand that negative feedback mechanisms are the way in which um, homeostasis is achieved, the ways in which um, internal conditions are regulated and controlled uh, to be set within a certain limit, right? So, for example, our body temperature being within a few degrees of 37, our blood glucose having specific concentrations, etc., etc. Right? Now, that's all I was trying to draw home in this video, so I'm going to stop there. I hope that did make sense. If you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below, uh, the comment box sorry, below, or send me a direct email. As usual, please do like and subscribe because it really does help me out, and you'll be notified of new videos when they become available. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.